I have to say, this is a guilty pleasure of mine. I love these stories. I'm sorry, I love a demise of a celebrity. Yes, I have heard things in the industry about Anne Hathaway. Oh, Phil. Jennifer Lopez was so rude on the set of that. There's <laughs> so many rumours about JLo being a diva. She's on a Mariah Carey level. Anyone can name and shame now. So yeah, it, and, know, and we will on this show. It does feel like he was kind of left to his own devices. What we have learned is what was happening in the hours leading up to his tragic death. He was almost in a psychotic state. This is the kind of drug that does make you hallucinate. I get the impression Liam was quite lonely. Welcome to Virgin Radio Showbiz Wrap. I'm Maddie Hale and The Sun on Sundays, Hannah Hope and I are going to break down all the biggest entertainment news stories of the week. Now, Hannah, let's get started on the latest with Liam Payne. This has been, you know, two weeks of just rolling coverage and news updates that are coming in every which way. We've learned so much about his tragic death, the 31-year-old former One Direction star, as we know. What's kind of the latest that's happened in the last few days? Well, interestingly, we've actually had the toxicology report from mm. uh, his, you know, what was in his system when he tragically died. And some of the drugs that have come out of the toxicology report have been quite shocking. Uh, pink cocaine being one of them. Um, and I think sleeping tablets, uh, among others. I mean, pink cocaine is something in the UK that we haven't heard much mm. about. But I think it's quite a psychedelic drug. Um, also, we've heard that someone potentially connected to the hotel, maybe staff, was smuggling drugs into to him via a Dove um, soap, soap packet, bars. which is actually terrible for Dove as well. I'm sure they're having organic <laughs> crisis meetings as well. Um, so we know that there were people, he had been sober and he'd actually mm. um, done some, uh, I think, sober tests and you know, showing that his blood was clean of drugs and alcohol to sort his US visa out. Yeah. But obviously after that he'd relapsed. And it, I think there's like some concern that there were some bad people around him sort of passing mm. him drugs. Yeah, because he'd been in Argentina for a few weeks, as you said, waiting for that US visa in in the area. And then his girlfriend left a few days before. She said on TikTok that they were meant to be there for only a couple of days, but then they ended up being there for two weeks. And it does feel like he was kind of left to his own devices, even though he did have his bodyguard there. But it, it's just such a a tragic story, but yeah, the toxology report was interesting because we knew that the hotel room photos allegedly show yeah. that there was quite a lot of drugs scattered in the room with a lot of damage that was done. But look, I want to show you this clip here because earlier in the week I interviewed a psychiatrist called Dr Raj Baswad who I've spoken to a few times. He spoke about what Liam would be feeling and his mental state would be in those moments having ingested all those drugs. We don't know and we're, we're speculating, um, but it's very important to have this conversation to try and um, uh, educate people so they don't fall into the same problems and to see where drug abuse leads and where depression leads, because it can lead to a very dark place. I think it's highly likely that this person was so unconscious or delirious that they wouldn't have known what was going on at all. And that may be why they ended up falling out of this window, I think. They would have to be in a very chaotic mental state for it to be a pure accident. And maybe that was the case, given that what we found out now in terms of the sheer amount of different drugs in the system that would lend credence to the theory that this was someone that was in a very delirious mental state, therefore actually not entirely conscious, probably unconscious, or in a fluctuating state of consciousness, coming in and out of consciousness. I think that that was the main question that people were having about what he would be feeling like in that moment that led to his death, because even though he was on the third floor and there is reason to believe that anyone could fall off the third floor and, and suffer, you know, traumatic injuries like he did. What I spoke to Raj about was kind of like that moment that you do fall and those kind of, your body kicks into, you know, that fight or flight mode and how, and he said that a lot of people that would be sober would be able to kind of stop themselves with their arms and obviously avoid hitting their head. But it makes sense if to if Liam was either semi-conscious, semi-unconscious or fully unconscious in that state after, you know, an insane day. 
I think actually that's so interesting um, understanding, you know, from the doctor's point of view, yeah. because what we have learned is what was happening in the hours leading up to his tragic death. Um, we know that he um, was seen in the hotel lobby on his laptop and, you know, he, he actually lost his temper. We know that hotel staff rang the police because they couldn't control him. So that would almost imply that maybe the psychedelic drugs yeah. were taking effect. He was almost in a psychotic state. Um, and it's just so sad, isn't it, that that it, it was no one's fault, but they rang the police. They didn't really know how to control mm -hmm. him. He, they obviously didn't think that he was, you know, safe for himself or others. So he sent him up to his room. Um, so it, that would it kind of go with what the doctor's theory was of him yeah. being chaotic. And it is a it is a good point because a lot of people who aren't kind of deep in the thick of this tragedy would wouldn't know that the the hotel actually called the police before anything had happened, before he'd fallen. They called him, they called police basically in preparation, scared that he might hurt himself knowing that he had a balcony in his hotel suite and he'd obviously been acting erratically. So I want to ask you about those final kind of hours or so or because this was during the day, this was not at night, this was during the day and he did pass around 5pm. So in the lead up to that, who was he with and, and what was he doing? So we've had a reporter out in Argentina and he actually met two women um, who have been reported locally to be escorts. Um, he did spend several hours with him, uh, with Liam. And I think that, there, you know, there is some there is some kind of concern that maybe, you know, he was trying to engage in some kind of sexual activity with them. Um, we also have, it's also been reported that there was some argument about money and he, I think his cards weren't working, but he also was saying, look, I've, he was overheard by another hotel guest who was interviewed um, in the press to sort of say, you know, I do have money, my cards aren't working and I'd like to give you money. I'm a really giving person. Um, so I think, you know, there could have been a discrepancy about that, but I, I get the impression Liam was quite lonely in in, yeah. in the, uh, you know, he was on his own in Argentina. He was waiting for his US visa. His girlfriend, Kate Cassidy, had gone back. And I think that there was just concern, um, you know, uh, uh, he, he didn't want to be on his own. And actually today, uh, Nicole Scherzinger has come out leaving a tribute. She had um, been make, uh, creating a show called Making the Band uh, for Netflix, and he'd been part of that show. And apparently they were texting just that day. So I, I guess I don't believe that this was... Um, yeah. This was his intent, his purpose to to, to die that day. I, I really yeah. do feel that it was most probably an accident. Uh, yeah, it, it does seem that all the I mean the the investigation along with the autopsy is not is not finished just yet, and Elim's father is still in Argentina because he can't bring the body home until the final autopsy is complete. But it is a good point because basically Lamar Odom, as you know, the form, the former basketball uh, and ex husband of Khloe Kardashian, he came out and spoke about pink cocaine, as you said. It, it, it's quite foreign to, well, us. I say us Brits as an honorary Brit. It is. I've never heard of it, but it is to anyone listening or watching. It is a concoction of different drugs. I think it's is it ketamine, MDMA, and um, methamphetamine. And he said, Lamar said, this is the kind of drug that does make you hallucinate. That does give you a lot of head noise, and you can hear all these noises in your head telling you to do certain things. I'm not saying that it, it said for him to do that. I wouldn't allege that, but it must have put him in such a chaotic state, as Dr Raj did point out. Absolutely. And I think, you know, from the reports, because this happened in a very public place in a, in a hotel, so you've got lobby guests there and you've also got staff. It did sound like he was entering some kind of psychotic, chaotic mm. state, which is really, really sad. And I think as well, um, you know, I, I, I do really feel for his family. They're in flux at the moment. Obviously, they, they you know, his dad's out there. We've seen heartbreaking pictures of him um, going to, you know, look at all the tributes that have been left by yeah. fans. And, you know, I guess the family just want to bring his body home so they can look at, I guess, funeral, mm. um, you know, arrangements. Whether that's public or private, we don't know. But just finally on this insane tragedy, Hannah. What's the update on the on an investigation? Because they are looking at potential local drug dealers who might be held accountable for supplying Liam Payne with these drugs, but also just operating such a sneaky system to be getting it through the hotel. As you mentioned, it was found in the Dove soapbox. 
You're right. I think that they're looking at local drug dealers, but I know that the hotel has been um, holding an internal investigation into its staff. I have even read that some staff members have been let go or suspended as well. It's ongoing because it, you know, I guess it feels like for these drugs, they may have been infiltrated by someone mm. who worked in the hotel. Um, so yes, it is all very sad and also, you know, very serious as well. Mm. Um, but I think that in the weeks to come, there will be, uh, you know, talk about his funeral arrangements. And mm. I know that One Directioners are going to want to commemorate him. And they did, on on the note of the drug dealers, they did, uh, a few reports were saying that some local Argentinian drug dealers were actually, you know, preying on Liam Payne, knowing that he was quite vulnerable. Yeah, he'd been in and out of rehab. Um, his issues with drugs and alcohol had been in the press, which is actually the whole reason the US um, visa department wanted to get him drug tested because they were aware of his issues. Um, and yeah, you're right, it, absolutely. He would have been an easy target for drug dealers. It's such a fascinating story and so tragic for Liam Payne and his uh, family. And uh, there's gonna be so many more developments, especially as I said, the autopsy's not finished. Jeff Payne is still in Argentina, uh, waiting to take his son home. And then of course, we'll probably be waiting for those uh, private or, or public funerals. So next week, I'm sure there'll be even more developments on the situation, but we're gonna have a bit of a gear change now because there's something I spotted on TikTok, this hairdresser, Emmanuel Miller, he spilled the beans on a celebrity that he didn't get on with on set. It's hard to talk about working with Blake without mentioning I, I did a film with Anne Hathaway and that was one of my worst experiences. Anne never acknowledged me as a person. For four and a half months, she treated me like a servant. During that time while we were in Los Angeles, my daughter was her stand-in and I was doing her hair personally, just one-on-one. -on -one. I was just doing her hair. She never said, your daughter, do you have other children or how long have you been married? There was never any personal conversation which Kate Blanchett and I, we, we, we knew each other's family. She knew my children. Johnny Depp was that way, Tom Hanks. But Anne Hathaway never did that. Well, Blake Lively, I got the feeling when I first met her, I thought, oh no, is this another Anne Hathaway situation? Because the way she was dismissive from, from the get-go. Hannah, I have to say, this is a guilty pleasure of mine. I love these stories. I, I'm sorry, I love a demise of a celebrity. <laughs> I just think it's so funny. These people are obviously heroes to most of us, but when it comes out saying that, you know, hairdresser like Emmanuel Miller didn't like Anne Hathaway, didn't like Blake Lively on set, and, you know, these people are salt of the earth. They're the service people keeping these industries afloat. What did you think about that? Oh, I loved it too. I mean, you, I mean, what, what's the old saying, you know, on a first date, just check that the date is being nice to the service staff, the waiters, yes. if they're not, then it's a big red flag. And I think the same thing goes for uh, these Hollywood stars uh, on these movie sets. Like you say, they, they're the ones kind of making it all tick along. Yeah. And the great thing about TikTok now is that ev everyone is held accountable. Yeah. Like anyone can just post a video and like, basically prove, you know, show show everyone yeah. up. Um, but yes, I have heard things in the industry about Anne Hathaway. Oh, still? That, uh, well, I think there's, there's a few <laughs> clips of her being very offhand. I mean, a lot of these actors don't like to do press interviews, for mm. example, but essentially they're selling their film and people, yeah. these days as well, people, it's quite a lot of effort for you to get off your ass and go down to the cinema and pay money for a ticket yes. and you can just go onto a streaming service. So they really need to kind of be friendlier and, and sell it all, I think. What I find weird about that is, right, when they say, you know, I really hate doing press and it's not just celebrity uh, in the entertainment industry, it's the same in sport industry. When you sign on for a movie, you sign on for the press weeks in the lead up. Like that's just what you do. You're getting paid for that part. So I'm kind of just like suck it up and just be a good person. And then you have celebrities that look like so much fun where they're doing the, uh, the press junkets and uh, giving their all to the journalists. But that video of Anne Hathaway from years ago when she's doing that, that went viral in the last few months and she's doing that interview with a journalist. I think she's Swedish, now lives in the US and she's doing it for Les Mis and she's so dismissive. So rude. And and that's, that's not, let's not be around the bush here. These actresses, actors are getting paid millions and millions of dollars. They're not on minimum wage. Yeah. So, you know, and they're, and they're actors, so they can pull it out the bag and be charming and, mm. and, and, and talk excitedly about their film. It's not that big a deal, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, I mean, the whole Blake Lively debacle. Yeah, I want to get your thoughts on that. 
I found it super interesting because there had been loads of rumors in the industry about how rude and offhand she was. Um, but also she was, I mean, it was just, it was just a terrible PR disaster, wasn't it? Because yeah, she was whole movie. promoting a film about uh, domestic abuse and she tried to make it all about selling her hair care brand and mm. putting your floors on and going to the cinema. And it was just so interesting to see the tightly knit Hollywood PR machine implode on itself. And it was thanks yeah. to things like TikTok and people yeah. holding these huge celebrities to account. And I mean, we've seen it happen with countless celebrities in recent years. I mean, I'm not going to name names, but um, oh, one it. TV <laughs> star in the UK. Would I know this person? Household name. You'll definitely know this this actor. Um, it's the only time in my maybe sort of 15, 16 year career as a journalist that um, someone's made me cry. And what? he was hungover <gasps> and he was promoting uh, his TV series and he was so like sarcastic and awkward with all the questions I was asking. And then at the end, he stormed out <gasps> and some of his co-stars actually comforted me, which was quite Aww. nice. Um, because I was just so embarrassed by it. But, but since then, yeah. there have been reports about this same TV star being a bit uh, rude. I so I, I, it always catches up with you, doesn't it? And, I and know. I, you have to remember the celebrity, what's the saying? The celebrity, you know, be nice to the people on the way up because-, because you'll see them on the way down. That's what my dad told me getting into the media. And obviously I have absolutely no celebrity status, but it applies <laughs> for everyone. Well, you're always very friendly to everyone I've ever seen you <laughs> interact with. And I think- Sometimes that, I think too friendly, so, sometimes HR issue vibes. <laughs> I um I do okay with the with the um with the Blake Lively stuff and the, it ends with us. I'm a huge ends with us fan, so I was quite excited for the movie. But it it was kind of completely taken over by that PR nightmare. The same thing with Don't Worry, Darling, which you'll remember from whatever year that was. Was it 2021 yeah, or something? So that was Harry Styles and Olivia Wilde, and yeah. they're dated. And then Florence Pugh had yeah. to have had some, like, rumored to have had some interaction with Harry Styles. And then no one would be on the red carpet at the same time. And I actually really enjoyed the movie, Don't Worry, Darling. I oh, really, I hadn't seen I, it. I, loved I, I was it. actually completely turned off by it because of all that stuff. Not, yeah. that, not that that makes a difference. They're like, but I almost care. didn't watch it because I was it, because it, it meant that you couldn't enjoy the film because you were just thinking about all the scenes that they'd filmed yeah. each other and how awkward it would have been. So yeah, it was a PR disaster. And you know, these actors need to take note. You need to just be friendly and I know and pretend like you know everyone's happy as Larry because those junkets that we spoke about that journalist they went viral and everyone's like, how rude. Also, no one wants to give money to celebrities knowing that they're like rude people. But I want to get into some other rumors about rude celebrities. I've got a little list here. Okay. This one absolutely made me laugh. And I want to see if you if you <laughs> know about this, because this is Sharon Osbourne. She doesn't like Ashton Kutcher. Oh, really? And she has publicly said, I didn't get on with him at all. He has bad attitude. She supposedly mispronounced his name and he was pissed off. And he comes on with this attitude and goes, what have you done in the industry? And I was like, kid, don't start with me because I'm going to eat you up. Well, first of all, Sharon Osborne is an absolute legend. I've had the pleasure of interviewing her and she always gives her time. Yeah. And she's always just really enthusiastic. And she, I guess she gets it. She gets how showbiz works. Mm. Um, Ashton Kutcher, there's some interesting TikTok videos. Um, people are wondering, could his downfall be upon us? Moving on to a few other celebrities that I thought, as I say, first of all, Jane Fonda is not someone that you want to be on the bad side of because she's obviously just an iconic woman still in the 80s or 90s now she do you remember the film monster in law she yes. did with jennifer lopez yes which was such a great film she said that she said that jennifer lopez was so rude on the set of that and she said jennifer accidentally sliced her eyebrow open while shooting that slap scene and she never apologized <gasps> I mean, there's so many rumors about J Lo being a diva. Really? You know, about her her dressing room demands. Like uh, she's on a Mariah Carey level, you know, in terms of white lilies, and you know, she she likes everything to be a certain way. So that doesn't surprise me. But also, Jane Fonda is a veteran in the industry, isn't yeah. she? She's iconic, and she will have worked with everyone. So for her to go on the record and say that, that's so juicy. I know, and I loved it when, um, oh, this one made me laugh. This was Freddie Prince Jr. He criticized Kiefer Sutherland, who I would assume Kiefer Sutherland was kind of just like a dad vibe and just like a great a great guy. He said um, it, they worked on the movie 24 together and he goes, it was terrible. I hated every moment. Kiefer was the most unprofessional dude in the world. That's not me talking trash. I would say it to his face. I think everyone that's worked with him has said that. 
I love, I love that. That's just so juicy. Um, I, I have read things about uh, Kiefer. I've never met him, so I don't know. But I have read that he, you know, can be quite feisty. But also, this is the problem, isn't it? We build up these actors and actresses mm. to become godlike icons. And then I guess that gets in their head. I, and I love the fact that this is made public because I just think if you are hand, well, you work hard for it as in any celebrity, singer, actress, whatever you may be, you work hard for it. But you were given a golden ticket. You were given so much money and fame and, and opportunities that come with it. You just have to be nice. It's not that hard. And when you have a journalist interviewing you about a project that you've worked hard on, that you're passionate for, that you've be beat other actresses and actors out for, just be kind. It's not that tough. And, and also anyone can name and shame now. So yeah, it, it, and, everyone... and we will on this show. <laughs> When you, you're going to get more comfortable in the show, next week you're actually going to name whoever that actor was. So I'm absolutely not having a bar of this anonymity. Um, we're going to move on to a really funny story I think is funny. Ivanka Trump, Trump's daughter, his eldest daughter, she takes her, her daughter, Arabella, to um, Taylor Swift's Eras concert in Miami the other week. And... Arabella is a huge Swifty. For her birthday, she had a cake and it was literally like written on it, like boys only want love if it's torture. And I just thought this was such a funny topic to talk about. Donald Trump's arch nemesis, Taylor Swift. He quite literally hates her. He says, I hate her on his truth social page. And then he's got his daughter and granddaughter off to see her. What did you think about that? Well, family Christmases are going to be <laughs> mega orcs, aren't they? I mean, I, I, I mean, that's so funny though. I love that. I mean, the thing is these kids, they, they like who they like. Yeah. I mean, I think Kim Kardashian, yeah. who, she's obviously got a huge feud with Taylor Swift. You know, they've, Taylor Swift's written songs about her. Um, and, you know, North's dad, Kanye, obviously had a huge falling yes. out with Taylor Swift. He's written songs about Taylor. Um, and I think that, you know, she's a, she's a Swifty as well. So these yeah. kids like who they like. And Taylor, I think, wrote that on her new record on uh, Torch's Poets Department. One of the lyrics is something like, your kid will come home singing my songs or whatever it is. I'm like, this is, what a win for Taylor Swift. Like, honestly, what a win to know that you're going to have to suck up and, and the awkwardness and just the ego and having to fork out them. I'm sure they didn't pay for it. I'm sure there was some sort of loophole around it. And take your kids to see Taylor Swift, support her on her insane tour, knowing that Daddy Donald is going to be absolutely seething in Mar-a-Lago, pissed that his granddaughter has found a liking to his arch nemesis. Taylor, uh, and then Kim Kardashian and Kanye knowing that their daughter Northwest and her friends are like, no, I want to go see Taylor. Taylor's absolutely having the last laugh here, isn't she? You know, and she's <laughs> laughing all the way to the bank because she's like a billionaire. So good on Taylor. I think she's so kind of iconic and girl power. Uh, you know, she's just brilliant. I think you're absolutely right. Taylor is having the last laugh on this one. And, you know, as a huge Swifty, I knew she'd always prevail over these snakes, snakes in the grass. <laughs> That's all from us this week. Be sure to like and subscribe for the latest entertainment news here on Virgin Radio's YouTube channel. And thank you to Hannah Hope. You're welcome. It was an absolute pleasure. <laughs>